Hey guys, welcome to exercise 11-2. In this exercise, we're going to be looking at how to modify your project model, just like what we did for the elevation view, that we're going to be doing the same thing for section view to figure out how to adjust door locations, ceiling heights. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go under the first floor plan, and we're going to create a view that's going to cut across as a section view across this way. We're going to go under View, Tab, Create Panel, and we're going to select Section. We're going to go ahead and cut a section straight across this way. And just like we did in the previous one, I do want to point out, this is your, what your view range looks like. This is where the section cut is. If you want to flip the section cut, you can select these flip section arrows here. Now the section goes in the opposite direction. You can move the section itself there. Again, you have the ability to cut a section, create gaps, and then you can also switch out how the section will be read. You have three options, whether it stays as a category where you can actually note it, or it goes into the bottom of the section, and we're going to go ahead and switch this to where you can actually have the section read, and we can also put a gap in it. And this section, we're going to call this section Cross Section 1. So we're going to select the arrow, we can open view, or we can go under the project browser, scroll down to sections, and under section, building section, we can call section 2, rename it cross section 1. And uh, cross section 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that as is. Section 1, we're going to rename that one. To longitudinal section. We're going to go ahead and open up cross section 1 and we're going to look at this wall specifically. We're going to align this wall so it aligns with the floor here. To align this wall to the edge of the floor, you're going to simply hover your mouse right here, right where the floor is, and you're going to type in the tab. You're going to keep hitting tab key until you can cycle your selection to the edge of this wall. So let's go ahead and go to Modify and select the Align tool under the Modify panel. We're going to try to cycle through, so hit Tab as you hover your mouse over. Once that portion of the wall is highlighted, it will create this datum line, and you're simply going to select the edge of the wall, hit Tab until you can select the exterior of the wall, and then have this be aligned to the edge of the floor. You're simply going to make sure your thin lines are turned off so you can actually see the cut of the section. And you're going to extend the wall so it may thereby having a cross section that actually cuts through and connects with the floor. We can also change our ceiling, go under Edit Boundaries, and you can go under any layer or any floor plan and manipulate the ceiling Once you're done with modifying all of your floor to be going to the outside and touching the edge of the structure, you're going to go ahead and press the check mark. If you hit the check mark and you see this dialog box, there will be an area that will be highlighted that lets you know if the drawing is incorrect or there is overlapping line. We're going to hit continue and we're going to go ahead and clean up this area by simply going under the join tool and filleting this. Hit check and you will say attach. Now once we go into the section view, we're looking at the structure extending out, we're looking at the wall being aligned, and if you look at the actual cut itself in detail, and thin lines, we can see that we have ceiling that is cutting this way. We're going to go ahead and fix that in our cross section by going under edit boundaries, open view, And when we go back to our cross section one, we should have the ceiling no longer intersecting. Now that line there, as we have this line highlighted, we can see what that is being highlighted. We can go under base over footing to see if it can be visible. If it's not visible, we can go under the cross section and then modify as necessary. But in this case, it is a wall that can be extended up and connected to support the floor above. 
Over here, we can go under Detail View, and we can select Fine, and we will be able to see all the multiple types of floor decking and structure that is going on. Since we have an unconnected height, we can reconnect it. We can lower the walls where we need to, or we can raise the wall where we have to, thereby making sense of the actual structure. For ceilings, where the lights is actually going through the floor joists itself, you can bring the ceiling down by simply selecting the ceiling and looking at the temporary dimension and selecting 6 foot 8. Since the light fixture is attached to the ceiling, as the ceiling drops, you are able to have the light have enough space where it no longer interrupts the floor joists. And as you go around your plan, you can modify your drawings to make sure that your floor is now catching the walls that are coming from above and then places where you have double heights, you're able to capture them in your plan. At the same time, we're going to be adding a strip footing below the foundation wall. We're going to do that by going to our project browser under the floor plan and we're going to go under top of footing layer. Once here, we're going to go ahead and draw our 24 inch footing. We're going to go under architectural tab build panel, select wall, and then under, under wall, we're going to be looking at 24 inch wall footing. Once we have found our wall, we're going to go ahead and select it. We're going to make sure these are the options. We're going to make sure that bottom of footing is selected. For our location line, we're going to select wall center line. And then we're simply going to do pick lines. And when we're picking lines, we could do outside lines or we can do pick walls or pick faces, and we can pick faces. In this particular case, we're going to go ahead and draw a line, and we're going to use wall center lines. Once you have your entire footing drawn, you'll have the secondary line that will show where the footing is. Now, there are additional footings that can occur during a plan, and it might occur through here, where you have a wall that separates the garage from the main house. Now this is particularly decided by structural engineer and the specification of where all the divides happen are also specified by structural engineer but it can be included into your model. Now when we switch back to a cross-section model notice how these walls have appeared and this situates where your footing will be. Next thing I want to point out is when we drew these particular walls, if I select one of the walls and we look at the property, you can see how the top constraints were up to uh, top of footing and the base constraint was bottom of footing. Again, if you notice that bottom of footing is negative 10 foot 3 inches and it is relative to wherever these levels are. In our section view, if we were to decide to take this bottom of footing and go to negative 11 feet, for example, to make it even deeper, this will allow us to change our bottom of footing to be two feet deep because the wall is constrained to the level that have been created and levels can be altered under elevation and section view. Next, we're going to go ahead and switch the line work for our basement wall when it comes to going back to the floor plan top of footing. Notice how these lines are reading as solid lines despite the fact that they're further beyond. We can select these lines and we can go under the Modify tab, and under the Line Works, we could select Hidden Lines. Once you have selected Hidden Lines as selection, simply select all your footing lines by clicking on them. If you accidentally click a wrong line, simply undo by hitting Ctrl-Z. Lastly, I want to specify what happens if you have a footing that is particularly stepped due to the site. And if you were to have this situation, you would have to create multiple levels and switch, situate your footing accordingly. You can simply select the footing and use a splitting command that is under your modify and you can go under split element and then situate it at the right height and have your wall make contact with it. In the past, when I've worked on previous projects, I have always created more levels into my cross-section view and then had the footing step down accordingly based on levels and then from there I have adjusted the height 
of where the walls will be if they need to be staggered or if they need to be sloped. With that said, that concludes exercise 11-2. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow for more content.